Good afternoon and welcome to Master Talker Online Class. So this is the continuation of the hyperbola. So I'm going to give you um, the formulas for hyperbola. Is if you know the formulas for ellipse, it's the same thing as hyperbola. It's just few things that you need to change. You know that. Uh, so for hyperbola, I'm having what the one facing x, x will be positive. So I'll have x minus h all squared over what a squared minus what y minus k all squared over what uh, b squared is equal to one. Okay, is equal to one, please. Is equal to one. So, so for for the for the one that is parallel to y axis, I'll have what y minus k all squared all over what a squared. Okay, uh, minus x minus h all squared all over what b squared is equal to one. Now, unlike in in ellipse. You know that in ellipse that a is always greater than b why because that is what to help us to know where the par parabola and um, the ellipse is parallel to or facing but here a can be greater than b b can be greater than a they can both be equal okay so there is no condition here there's no condition a here for a and b so how do we know where the parabola is parallel to it's parallel to the side that is positive so x is positive here so parabola is parallel to x axis y is positive here parabola is parallel to y axis okay so the next thing you need to know is um the center you know the center does not change the same thing with the ellipse the center is what h comma k the same thing here h comma k so the next one is what the foci the foci you add to the side okay since it's parallel to x you are adding foci c to the side of x so i have what h plus or minus c comma k so the same thing here h plus or minus c comma k so the next one is what uh, uh what's the next one okay vertex vertices so for this vertex va, you are adding a so i'm having that vertex is what v bracket uh, h plus or minus a comma what k so i'm adding a so the same thing here h comma k plus or minus what a so i'm adding a va vertex so the next one iv uh, v rather the next one is what the eccentricity so that is the only problem here the eccentricity e you know eccentricity is what c over what a but c here is now but note that what um c squared here is equal to what a squared minus b squared but uh, sorry, because here is minus, sorry, to be plus. So a square plus b square, please. Very, very important. So eccentricity is now the square root of a square plus b squared all over what a. So that is that. But in ellipse, since here is plus, the eccentricity carry, uh, the c carries a uh, minus. So the next one is uh, the major and the minor axis. And it doesn't change. Major axis is equal to 2a semi-major axis axis is equal to a itself okay the one that is positive or the big one just the big one okay so um minor axis minor axis is what to be then semi minor axis is equal to b the same thing here it doesn't change so uh the length of lattice rate two the length of lattice rectum it doesn't change it's the same thing with that of ellipse the length of lattice rectum it doesn't change it's the same thing with that of ellipse length of lattice rectum is equal to what 2b squared over what over a 2b squared over a it doesn't change the same thing for the y axis it doesn't change length of lattice rectum is equal to what 2b squared over what a the next one they will ask is the equation of directics. Equation of directics. So for the equation of directics, it's gotten from the vertex. From the vertex. So vertex here is h plus plus or minus a. So we say that so since this equation, x is equal to what? h plus or minus a, but you must put over e, please. Very important. The same thing here. Y is equal to what? K plus or minus a over what e. So that is equation of the directrix okay then the last but not the least they will ask you is the conjugate 
the conjugate. The conjugate now said, if it is facing y axis, make it to be facing x axis. So what do you do? Um, you will change it. So the other one will not be minus. So it will not be what? Uh, y minus k all squared minus x minus h all squared is equal to 1. So the denominator, uh, do they remain the same? Okay, this one, just carry this one, d squared, and this one what? a squared. So just change the minus. That's the conjugate. Change the minus. So for this one, we'll not be what? Carry this one first and write first. So I have x minus h all squared all over what? d squared minus y minus k all squared over a squared is equal to 1. So these are the only things they can ask you to find in um, hyperbola. So if you know ellipse, you have known hyperbola. The only difference is that in the equation that here is minus, then in your C, here is plus. That's all. Every other thing is the same thing. And then you will not know how to do the conjugate. Conjugate means if you are parallel to x, you will not, the conjugate will not be parallel to y. But if you are parallel to y, the conjugate will not be parallel to x. That's all. So once you have known uh, ellipse, you have equally known the uh, uh, hyperbola. So let us just solve one question, uh, like two questions from hyperbola, and then we are done for that. Okay? The first question we are going to solve. Okay. Hyperbola. Okay. Okay, look at the question here. Okay, they said um, 7y squared minus 9x squared is equal to uh, 63. Okay, look at this. Now, the question is, how do we know if this equation is a hyperbolic function? First, the first thing you check is, the coefficient of x, y here is positive, and the coefficient of um, x squared here is positive, and the coefficient, of, the coefficient of y squared here is positive, the coefficient of x squared is negative. And there is no place we have x and y together. So it is a hyperbolic function facing what? Hyperbolic function facing y axis or hyperbolic function parallel to y axis, which is the side with a, with a plus. So let us go. How do you solve this? Divide everybody by 63 so that here will be 1. So I have divide by 63. So what do I have? 7y squared over 63 minus 9y, 9x squared over 63 is equal to what? 63 over 63. So this take care of this. I'm having y squared over 9 minus x squared over 7 is equal to what? 1. So from this place, we've gotten what? Make it to look like hyperbola. y minus 0 all squared all over what? 9 minus x minus 0 all squared over what? 7 is equal to 1. So this implies that my h is 0, my k is 0, my a squared is 9, so that a will be 3, and my b squared is 7, so that b will not be the square root of what? 7. So, and my c squared, and my c squared is equal to what? Uh, a squared plus b squared. Don't forget, because here is minus. That's how I used to remember. So c squared is equal to what? a squared is 9 minus b squared is 7, which will give me 2 squared. Which will give me 2, sorry. So c is now the square root of 2. So since c is the square root of 2, you can now start finding everything you are asked to find. So the first thing we are going to find is the center. The first thing we are going to find is the center. The center. Which is h, k. Which is equal to what? 0, 0. The next thing we are going to find is um, the foci. The foci. So the next thing is the foci. 
and the way it sounds, you know what you are adding. Four Kai. So we're adding C. So C is equal to what? And this this parabola is parallel to y axis. So it will be h comma k plus or minus c. So which is what? S bracket zero comma zero plus or minus my c is root three, uh, root two. So that is that. That is for foci. So the next thing is what? Vertex, vertex, va. So it will be what? H comma k plus or minus a. Okay. So which is what? V bracket zero comma zero plus or minus a is um. A is 3. So you can now separate it. So the next thing we are looking for is um, uh, length of lattice rectum. Length of lattice rectum, which is what? 2B squared over A, which is what? 2 brackets, my B squared. My B squared is 7. So all over my A, my A is 3. So what do I have? 14 over 3. So the next one, V, uh, equation of directrix. Equation of direct tricks which is what since he's facing y as i'll start from y so from the vertex i'll get it y is equal to k plus or minus a but i must put over e so but i've not gotten e sorry let's get our eccentricity our eccentricity e e is equal to what uh c over a which is what my c is what root two over three so let's go so i'm having my k is zero plus or minus a a is a 3 times, this one will turn around to be 3 over root 2, which is what? Which is giving me that y is equal to what? Uh, 9 over root 2, which implies that what? Root 2y minus 9 is equal to 0. So that is for eccentricity. So the next one is what? The, the major axis. Major axis is 2 times 3, which is 6. Semi-major axis is just 3. Minor axis is... Uh, 2 times root this, which is 2 root this. Okay? So, semi-minor as this is just root 7. So, which other thing am I supposed to get? Uh, okay. The next one we are, going, we are supposed to get is the, the asymptote. I didn't tell you that in the formula. Asymptote of a hyperbola. Hyperbola has an asymptote. And as you, you saw the equation of the asymptote, which is y is equal to k uh, plus or minus b over a bracket x minus h okay so or or the best way to get it is y minus k okay is equal to uh, plus or minus b over a into x minus h okay so that is um that is if the parabola is a parallel to i think x axis or so Or let's leave the asymptotes. Let me do research on that. But I think this one is for when it is parallel to to x axis. We, you start with y. But if it's parallel to y axis, you start with x. Okay. If it's parallel to y axis, we are starting with x. So it will be what x minus h is equal to plus or minus b over a into y minus k. So this one is since I started with x. This one is parallel to x axis. This is parallel to x axis please i didn't put that so since i started with y this is parallel to y axis so that is that please write it somewhere so which other thing are we forgetting okay the, okay we've done the question so the next thing is the what is it called the conjugate of the hyperbola the conjugate of the hyperbola is just carrying the other side bring it just swap them that's all. Swap them. I've cleaned the equation. I would have done that. So, but just swap them. I think the equation was um, the equation was um, y y squared over nine minus x squared over seven is equal to one. Okay. So the conjugate now conjugate the conjugate is just swap them. So it will be what x squared over seven minus y squared over nine. Is equal to what one, but in ellipse conjugate is just to swap the denominator, but in hyperbola conjugate is swap them completely the way it is. So that is that. So we'll solve one more question and then we are good to go for hyperbola. Okay, so let's solve just one more question. So the question said um, 3x squared, 3x squared minus y squared 
okay plus 12x plus 2y minus 1 equal to 0 so look at this if you look at this equation this equation is hyperbolic equation y because x squared is positive and y squared is negative which means this hyperbola is parallel to x the positive side and there's no place i have x and y together okay so if you have this equation what do you do bring them together these two i'm having 3x um 3x squared plus 12x together okay then i'm having minus into y squared plus uh 2y together okay sorry it will now be minus because minus times this will give you minus y but minus times this will, will turn this one to plus so it's equal to this one crossing here i'm having one so please you have to be careful in whatever you are doing here or just do it like this plus then leave this one minus here this one plus let's start with this okay so the next thing you are going to do is to make the coefficient of x squared to be one by bringing it anything that is the coefficient outside if i bring this three outside i'm having x squared plus 12x okay this one is not one it's minus one so i'll bring that minus one outside minus one times this i'm going to have minus one bracket or yeah, y squared sorry this one divide this by three i'm having four so that this time this is this and this time this is this so divide everyone by minus one i'm having plus here divide this one by minus one i'm having minus two y so that this time this is this and this time this is this is equal to one so once the equation is now one do what is called completing the square and completing the square said find half of the coefficient of x square it and add it to both sides so half of the coefficient of x is 4. What do you do? Square it and do what? Add it to both sides. So half of 4 is now what? 2 squared. I have found it. So I'll add it to both sides. So I have 3 brackets. x squared plus 4x plus 2 squared. I have gotten this one. So let me get the other one. Minus 1 bracket. y squared minus 2y. Let me find it. Half of the coefficient is minus 2. Then all, all squared is equal to minus one square later so what do you have now plus then minus one square i have added to this side is equal to one plus this one is three in bracket of this three in bracket of two squared that is for this one plus the next one is what minus one in bracket of this one minus one square so that is how to do that So what do I have? What do I have now? 3 brackets, x plus 2, all squared. 65, 65. So, minus 1 bracket. So these two and these two have squared. I hope you can see that. They have squared, so I'm putting it in bracket here. Is equal to 1 plus, this squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. This squared is 1. 1 times this is minus 1. I hope you are getting that. So I'm having 3 brackets x plus 